Ways up my people and welcome back to Crastorio 2. <laughs> Crastorio 2 is an overhaul mod for the factory building and automation game Factorio. If you don't know what that is, well you're about to watch me play through 3 days of the game, so you're going to learn pretty quick. Now I'm using a few other mods, some of which are quite insignificant, so I'm going to list them on the screen now if you care to look. But before we start, I recommend you grab some snacks, grab a drink, because it's quite a long episode, and I'm going to beat the entire game in this one video. Now the beginning of the game in Crastorio 2 is changed drastically from the base game, but not so much that it's as far gone as something like space exploration. The only real change is that your spaceship starts with a couple of broken machines like these assemblers, a lab and something to give you some power. The rest of the game is pretty similar in the sense that you're just feeding coal into your burner drills, moving things around manually, doing research and crafting things by hand. Just like the base game, the biters love to come and give you hugs when your pollution goes over. This however is a little bit more difficult to deal with because Crustoria makes it so you actually have to aim at where you're shooting and you can't just hold space and pray. With the first biter nest killed, I start researching automation cores. These allow us to craft assembling machines, which normally don't need research to unlock, but they do in this game. I think this is a good time to state that science packs have been replaced with tech cards. They're pretty much exactly the same, different recipes though, and they look different. Inserters also lock behind inserter parts and research for logistics, so I end up using burner inserters for the first hour or two of the playthrough, which is quite annoying. And before we even get to inserters, I start researching the first new machine, which is a crusher which essentially allows you to turn stone into sand, as well as a couple of other late game recipes which we're not going to get into for a while. Now if you look in the top left you can see we're already an hour into the game and I'm only just building my first furnace stack. Now this is a little different from the base game because furnaces you actually have to set the recipes. And also iron plates take two ore instead of one, alongside copper plates as well. You can enrich the ores later for a better, better yield on your recipes but that's quite a long way down the track. Now please don't ask me why I decided to do this, but I decided to make every single blueprint that I do in this game to be personally crafted by me. So I installed the editor mod which essentially allows me to jump into a different dimension to plan out my blueprints, but nothing I use here except from a single nuclear power plant blueprint later on is from Factorio Prints or any other website. And after finally unlocking inserters as well as a couple of other basic machines, I start to set up our first base. Now as is well known in the Factorio community, as long as you call it a starter base, it can be the biggest abomination known to humankind. This is most definitely the case with my starter base in this playthrough, as it turns out to be an entire bowl of ravioli. Starter base is always a mess, and at some point you simply want to nuke it. With that being said, we started off quite organised, just getting a couple of our basic things going, like automation cores, underground belts and normal belts. And as this tomb of a star space begins to grow and we start to produce more pollution, we need to place down a couple gun turrets to defend off the locals. Here you can see we're also placing down a couple more crushers, which is where we're going to start making our first bits of sand. As usual, you caught me deforesting a huge section of the world, but in this case it's actually okay because we're going to place down another new building called a greenhouse. Now this makes wood, but what's key here is it actually removes pollution rather than makes it. Now the keen-eyed among you would have noticed that I actually had Afraid of the Dark mod installed when I listed them at the start. That is supposed to make nighttime brighter, although I made this mod list after completing the entire game and I didn't actually install it until I'd say about two days through the playthrough. So I'm sorry you have to deal with the constantly changing light dynamics, but I guess you can deal with it, right? Please? Don't click off the video. Please? Anyway, I mentioned earlier that the furnaces you need to set recipes in. And this is because of recipes like coke and steel, which use two resources as an input rather than one. Coke uses wood and coal, and steel uses coke and iron. You'd think this is a bit of a pain when you're designing your first new furnace stacks, but you quickly get used to it after playing the game for a while. With all the basic building resources automated, we can get on to making some more intermediate products, like green circuits. Now the ratios and recipes for these are a bit different. One copper wire assembler can supply two green circuit assemblers, and the recipe also takes wood as well. Now normally I'd wait a bit longer before we do this, but I'm going to set up oil processing now. And that's purely for the sole reason that I want to get a car up and running. And in this game, cars use a special kind of fuel and you can't just run them off coal. I guess that does kind of make sense though, because when have you ever seen a car that runs off coal? Now this fuel also takes hydrogen. And that's made in an electrolysis plant by electrolyzing water. It also gives chlorine, which we're just going to burn off with a flare stack. And we also need to give it a bit of sand. The fuel itself is made in yet another new building called the fuel refinery. This thing doesn't really get used too too much until we start to make rocket fuel later on in the game. But finally with our car set up and the fuel to power it, we can go off and kill a whole bunch of the locals. Now 
Now it appears that they actually do have a mind of themselves and they decided to launch an attack on us while we were out killing them, destroying a whole bunch of our mining drills, which turned out to be a huge pain. But we recovered quickly and then got to building a new mall for our new belts, the red transport belts, along with the splitters and the undergrounds that come with them. Now from when we set up our oil, we were making excess petroleum gas, so I decided to deal with a bit of a power shortage of ours and use these gas burning generators to make some power. Now these things, well not these ones in particular, but these machines, generated us power up until we got nuclear, so it lasted for an extremely long time and they're quite efficient. The only downside is that they produce a ridiculous amount of pollution. With our power grid now not giving out on us every few seconds, we could start to move towards plastic and sulphur. These are important ingredients in crafting robots and other things that needed later game. Even though we have nanobots, rushing for robots was still something that I did. Not entirely sure why, but I guess logistics robots were useful. We also set up quartz, which we can smelt into silicon, which we can then use to make blue tech cards, or blue science, or whatever you want to call it, they're the same thing, right? So with all the precursor resources made to blue science, we started to set this up. Now, I made a couple of early game blueprints just to get us 30 science per minute in a tileable fashion, which is not that much, but it's easily enough to get us out of our starter base, because the whole point of this base is just to give us the resources needed to get the main base going, at which point we'll move out, start to use trains, and really up the production. And I also forgot to mention that every single blueprint I've made and used in this run, I'm going to put in a blueprint book, link down in the description, and every single blueprint will have a description of the inputs and outputs and names so that you can use it in your own run if you want to go ahead and do that. At this point, I took a little break and just appreciated how the starter base was metastasizing. And you can see it really is an absolute mess of spaghetti, especially the power poles, they're all over the place. I did install a mod that helps me organize my power poles, but I never actually used it. And to be honest, I don't know why I installed it in the first place. Anyway, with Blue Science up and running, I started to design a blueprint for advanced oil processing. Now just to give you an idea of why it's such a big deal that I designed all my own blueprints, because in Factorio, like the base game, I've never actually completed a run and launched a rocket. I've also never built an oil processing setup myself, because I always tend to use other people's blueprints. Now in this case I did actually end up using another one, I think it was by Nilaus, but the final base, like the main base, I actually used my own blueprint, so I'm still claiming that I made every blueprint myself. With oil processing up and lubricant on the run, we started to make robots and cover the entire base with roboports and then dump all of our inventory into logistics storage. This is extremely useful and it helped me build the new base and keep my inventory clean in the process. And one final step before we build the main base is to place down some of these air purifiers. These things suck pollution out of the chunk that they're in and are extremely OP. Combined with the military buffs that Crastorio 2 gives you, you shouldn't really have to worry about biters if you deal with them correctly. Although, hint hint, I didn't deal with them correctly and that became a bit of an issue later game. On the way to build the new base, I found some of this stuff called creep. Now this grows underneath the biter nests and when you kill them you can harvest it using a shovel that you get by pressing Alt C I think it is. It took me a while to find the shortcut and it was quite annoying. It can also be made in these bio labs and it's used for making military research although I never actually had to place a bio lab because it's quite easy to get and you come across a lot of it mining up biters. Now the main base, I did take a lot of inspiration from Dosh Doshington, if you've seen his video, which I'm sure you have to be honest if you're watching this, in terms of I wanted to use a one cargo wagon and one train system. Although because of course I'm British and we are superior, I redesigned the entire blueprint book so it was all left hand drive. So yet again, I'm claiming them as my own blueprints, don't argue with me. If for some reason you haven't seen his video, a quick rundown of what happens is the trains go through a one way line, depositing the resources where they're needed. And I'm using LTN so I could just set up the requester and depot stations, as well as the provider stations wherever I want and just request the resources while depoting them all at the start of the one way line so the trains never back up. I started by just setting off a couple of mining outposts and killing some biters that were in the way. And then I worked on the first main train block. If you've never used chunk aligned blueprints, I highly recommend it, especially for your railways because you can just snap them together and it's super easy. This entire process for you has taken a matter of seconds, but for me it took hours, and believe you me I was getting extremely bored just placing down my chunk line rail blueprints. It literally took no skill or thought whatsoever. The one exciting moment in this process was when I accidentally carved the oil supply to the old base to redirect it to the new base, only then remembering that my entire power grid was running off oil.
Although that didn't take too long to fix and I quickly sorted it and then we started to place an oil pro processing blueprint in the new base, being it the first thing that we built so that we can run the power for the new base as well. I'm not entirely sure if I did this correct, but when I designed the blueprint I just used some basic circuits to prioritise petroleum gas production over the other ones. Honestly, it worked, so why fix it? Let's just appreciate our first train going off to pick up some oil from the depot up top. Getting this working for the first time was extremely satisfying. Here I am tagging on sulfur and sulfuric acid to the end of the oil processing setup. I didn't have enough train stops below so I had to expand it slightly but we need sulfuric acid for ore enriching copper and iron ore. Ore enriching is the process of using ore washing plants to turn your ore into enriched ore and that essentially means that we don't need to use two iron ore for one iron plate and we can turn it to one iron ore to one iron plate. It takes quite a bit of space but the good thing is that once I've set it up I can pretty much just copy the blueprint for iron and copper as much as I want and if I add the train stops into the blueprint then I can literally just spam it all across the base. While I was doing this the mining drills in the starter base ran out so I needed to build this quick little train stop here just to bring in iron ore to the starter base from the mining patches that supply the main base. And with that sorted we can just spam down a bunch more ore enriching plants for iron and copper just by copying and pasting the blueprint. Now that we've got the ore being enriched we can start to smelt it. It's the same as normal just smelting the enriched ore instead of the normal ore and each of these smeltery stacks produces one red belt of whatever it's smelting. We can also fit two per chunk so the setup's quite compact in the long run. Again, like the ore washing plants, once we've set up a single chunk's worth we can literally just copy and paste the design including the train stops and it makes life a whole bunch easier. Now while I was setting this up I experienced a bit of an issue with the train depots where it was trying to send two trains to the same depot at the same time and it ended up clogging the entire main line. Normally LTN wouldn't care about train stop names but because I was using a blueprint to place down the train stops they all had the same name and because LTN uses temporary stops to find the nearest train stop when it reroutes then it sometimes sends them to the same train stop with the same name which is quite annoying but it was easily fixed by just renaming my depots to mainnet 1, 2 and 3. With that sorted I started working on crushing stone into sand and then loading it into another train stop. Now I did route one belt off however and that was to turn into hydrogen chlorine in another bunch of electrolysis plants. Now the hydrogen we just burnt off the excess and stored some in the tank where we could but the chlorine is used for mining rare metals which are a new resource Crastorio 2 adds. Rare metals use chlorine the same way that uranium uses sulfuric acid when you're mining. You just literally just need to pump it into the drills and then they work as normal. Now I don't know why they're called rare metals because they seem to be particularly common in my world especially compared to other things that we need later like mineral water. But once we got the mining outpost set up for that we could start to make the smelting and enriching plant. Now I did come across a bit of an annoying issue and I can't exactly remember why it happened but for some reason I ended up unloading enriched iron ore into my rare metal smelter. So I had to reprogram all of the recipes in the furnaces to iron until that bunch of enriched iron had run through the smeltery and we could clear it out. It was a bit annoying but in the long scheme of things it wasn't really that bad. Even though at this point we were still only making resources which we'd already previously started making in the star space, I still felt like I was making some serious progress. Especially when I placed down these greenhouses to make wood because they were such a huge building and they took up so much space I felt like I'd actually accomplished something. After I'd set up the greenhouses to produce wood, I added some more blocks to create coke, steel, silicon and quartz. Unfortunately I lost the footage for this so you're never going to be able to see it. But with that being said, we've pretty much used all of the train stops in our starter block here and we're also ready to move on to start making some more intermediate products like circuits. If you're curious about how much production we've actually got here, I set it up to support 6 belts of copper, 6 belts of iron, 2 belts of steel, 2 belts of quartz, 2 belts of silicon. Coke's kind of irrelevant because it's only really used for making steel, but the main limiting factor at this point was just how fast we could mine the metals and bring them in, because we'd only got a few mining outposts and we didn't really need to expand that until significantly later in the game. So it was only right that I expanded to a new train block and placed down a whole bunch more one-way stops. For some reason, no matter how far I got through the game, this process still seemed to be extremely slow. Even though at the end I ended up blueprinting the entire block and just placing it down whenever I needed one. But the bots for some reason just didn't like placing these things and they seemed to work extremely slowly. From this point in the game up until we built a perimeter wall far, far in the future, biters actually became quite annoying because they always seemed to attack my train stops. Now when it was depots like this it wasn't too bad because we could just replace them all and redirect it to the depot where LTM would give them a job from there. But when they attacked the train stops that were actually loading or unloading resources it was a big pain 
because all of the resources in the cargo wagons got destroyed and then LTN had some weird glitch where it said that there was a train on the way to the system when in fact it wasn't because it had been blown up by biters. They were a bit of an issue either way. But as you can see on the screen now, the first thing that I set up in this new block was production for green circuits. I set up production for two red belts which should supply us for a while, although I never limited my train stops so we ended up backing up like 116,000 green circuits at some point. So the production, to re the production to consumption ratios were a bit off and it was kind of hard to tell because most of the time we were just running off of a huge buffer that we'd got from earlier in the game when in reality our production was nowhere near the level that we needed to satisfy the base. But that doesn't happen for quite a while so you don't really need to worry about that for now. The next thing I set up was plastic production. Now plastic's used in extremely high amounts in Crastorio, mainly because the red circuits used extremely high amounts and they use plastic to create. The main issue that we faced was we couldn't actually bring in petroleum gas quick enough rather than actually output plastic or actually produce plastic quick enough, which was something I wasn't quite expecting, but it did make a little fun challenge to get around. Next was electronic components. Now, these are needed even more than plastic, although we didn't really need high amounts of them until late game, at which point we needed so many that we could never actually keep up with the production. This little blueprint for electronic components here produced two red belts, which were just loading back onto a train. Now this train stop design was especially good since it was my first time playing Crastorio. I didn't really need to know what I'd need in the future because as long as I'm not importing more than three different raw resources at a time, I can just dedicate each resource to a train stop and then output it on the fourth one. And whenever I need more than three raw resources, I know that I should probably make an entire production line for one of them, mainly the one which has the largest crafting chain. Similar to the issue we had with the depots earlier, because I used a blueprint to build this new train block, they all had weird names. So the trains were going wherever they wanted, whenever they wanted, and it caused a bit of an issue, even though we did end up fixing it in the end. You'd think by now I would have learnt my lesson, but no, is the answer. I haven't. I didn't end up changing the blueprint so that all of the train stops were named unused stop until I wanted to use them until much later in the game, which was, to be honest, extremely annoying and something I should have done a lot earlier, but I'm not the best, what can I say? Anyway, enough of the rant. You can see here I'm building the red circuits, which is what we're using the plastic for, and we're also using green circuits here, so again, just botch down a couple of stops and we're good to go. Following setting up red circuits, I decided to help a little bit with the biter defense on the southern front, and I just added a wall down there. I didn't add a wall on the other fronts until quite later, and I didn't add a wall on the northern front until right at the end of the game. But for some reason, I decided to do the bottom one first, so here I am just connecting the robot ports. While that was building, it's only right that we set up the blue circuits next to the red circuits. At this point we're making progress quite fast and the next goal is to get low density structures. To get low density structures we need rocket fuel and to get rocket fuel we need oxygen. Now oxygen you get from these machines called atmospheric condensers which just suck it from thin air. The recipe hour is quite slow so we need a whole bunch of them and you'll see me place an absolutely insane amount of these later to get nitrogen because the recipe is so slow. With the oxygen sorted we can now place down rocket fuel. Again I designed a blueprint in the editor and we can just stamp it down here. The output looks pretty awful at only 0.125 red belts, but that was actually enough to supply our base for a pretty long time, so it really wasn't that bad in the end. And like I said, next to the rocket fuel goes to low density structures. The output for this is even lower at 0.08 red belts. By this point in the game, I'd finally had enough of the trains going wherever they wanted, so I decided to actually rename my stops to whatever they were being used for. And with the trains behaving and us being over a day into the game already, I thought it was finally about time that we set up some science. So I set up some blank data cards here on this stop and then I just botched in some red science packs underneath. Something I'm quite a big fan of in Crastorio is the fact that they phase out science packs over time. So as you get to the further tech cards down the line, the red science packs are kind of just completely useless and you don't need to put them in the labs. This ends up saving quite a few resources in the long run and is honestly quite a nice feature. And next to the red tech cards, we add another couple of train stops for green tech cards. This is nothing new because we've set up all of these in the starter base earlier. And above the green tech cards go the blue tech cards and the yellow tech cards. We'd already set the blue tech cards up in the starter base, but the yellow tech cards were new. Now the yellow tech cards were no longer crafted in assemblers, and they used yet another building called the research server. Now I had to make a whole bunch of these by hand, which took a long time because we haven't set up a mall yet. But I will get to that in the future, and I'll use bots to do it all for us so we don't have to wait on the trains. With the repeat builds of the science packs and the starter base up, as well as the yellow science, it's time we actually make some labs to start researching. This was a bit of a botched job because I didn't really plan well for the future, but we managed to make a workaround, so it wasn't too bad of an issue. 
but the main idea here was just to create a whole line of train stops where we bring in each tech card and then use belts to transport them over to the labs which are just transporting science packs between them using inserters. With the labs online and running, I started research for the upgraded logistics system technology. This allows me to have requester chests and active provider chests, allowing us to do things such as setting up a mall and also refilling our pollution suckers. I made the mall stops in a similar way to how I did the lab stops, where I just put an entire line of them in a row and then we can just request whatever resources we need and allow the logistics bots to carry it for us instead of using belts or trains. Because I wanted to minimise the amount of trains that we use, I put all of the basic crafting recipes in assemblers using the logistics network at the bottom so we only had to import the raw resources on trains. The first things that I set up in the mall were the logistics chests which we just unlocked and the pollution filters so that we can move them to our pollution suckers. From this point on the game did speed up a bit because we had all of the resources necessary in the mall to basically just blueprint and stamp down whatever we needed wherever we needed. So of course we went around and stamped down a whole bunch of automatically refilling and emptying pollution suckers and they just emptied into a large storage container that I put by the mall. This saved me a whole bunch of time and even though you haven't really seen it because I've cut it all out of the video, I must have spent multiple hours refilling trains and pollution filters. So the next step was obviously just to increase our rocket fuel production and then automatically refuel our trains at the depots. Now I'm not sure why I decided to do this but when I first set up rocket fuel I used a pretty inefficient recipe. I think it was using hydrogen chloride. So here I am switching over to producing ammonia which is just nitrogen hydrogen and it's a much more efficient recipe for rocket fuel so that we can make much more without using as much hydrogen chloride which we need to mine our rare metals. As well as being more efficient, this recipe is a whole lot better because we can just suck both nitrogen and hydrogen directly out the air using the atmospheric condensers. I know I said I needed to place a whole bunch of nitrogen condensers earlier, but this setup here doesn't use too many, although we do up our production massively in the future and that's when I place down the whole bunch. Switching the actual setup for rocket fuel wasn't too hard because I installed some mod which allowed me to clean the entire pipes of the fluid so I could just replace it with whatever fluid I wanted to import next from the train stops and the recipe was so similar that we literally just had to switch it out in the machines and didn't have to change any of the infrastructure. Here I am just replacing the rocket fuel stop with passive provider chests allowing us to do this here and to place these stops in all our depots to refill our trains automatically using the logistics network. The final change I made using the new logistics technology was to change our defense blueprint to use gun turrets as well as flamethrower turrets. This was possible because we could now automatically transfer the ammo to the turrets rather than having to use a belt or do it manually. At this point I was also bored of our train stops getting attacked by biters all the time so I placed a defensive perimeter on the western and the eastern front. For some reason I didn't do the northern front but it wasn't really that much of an issue and to be honest we didn't really need to worry about biters from this point forwards at all. Once the biter attacks were dealt with I placed down a whole bunch more ammonia production for more rocket fuel production and then I started work on making batteries which I was going to send over to the mall. Batteries weren't really used for anything other than making robots so the only train stop that we actually needed to drop them off at was the mall so we never really ran low on production of batteries. In terms of making robots we also needed electric engines so that was what I got setting up next. With those two things dropped off at the mall I set up the automation for flying robot frames, construction robots and logistics robots. And with batteries and electric engines also in the mall, we had access to be able to craft a whole bunch of new things for power armour, like exoskeletons, night vision goggles, as well as a whole bunch of new things that Crustoro 2 adds, like the generators, which are basically fusion reactors that you can put in your armour, only instead of having to run off nuclear fuel, which is what they use in the normal game, you can just put normal fuel or rocket fuel in, and it powers the things in your armour for you. But at this point, having exoskeletons was really nice, because I hadn't got concrete yet, and I was running around the base at a snakeless pace. As well as adding things like exoskeletons 2 and 3, which we don't get access to for a while, Crastorio 2 also adds new power armor levels, which basically just increase the grid in which you can put your accessories. Once I got a taste for that faster speed that you get from using exoskeletons, I thought it was only right that I placed down concrete. And of course, when I'm doing concrete, I have to do it overkill so that I can cover the entire base in it. So I made a huge production setup here for normal concrete, refined concrete, and even the two new colours of new concrete that Crastorio 2 adds called advanced plates. These come in grey and black and of course I set them both up. I stored all my concrete in Crastorio 2's warehouses which are basically just huge storage containers. And for some reason I also didn't have a smelting set up for stone bricks so I just botched one on here on a train stop next to the concrete. Another benefit of having concrete is that we can make centrifuges for uranium ore processing. Which means we can start to get into nuclear. 
So of course I started mining up some uranium ore here. As usual, you just need to send sulfuric acid over to it and pump it into the drills, similar to how rare metals are done, and it mines for you. And I also thought I wanted to try out some of the new drills that Crastorio 2 adds. It adds MK2 miners and MK3 miners. MK3s are a bit further down the line, so we haven't got them yet, but here I am setting up a MK2 patch over some uranium. Something to be careful of in Crestorio 2 around uranium is that it damages you if you have uranium-238 or uranium-235 in your inventory, or if you're just walking too close to the patch. So it was a bit of a pain setting this up, but it wasn't too difficult in the end. Once I got a steady supply of uranium, I added centrifuges to the mall to craft and placed down a blueprint here for uranium ore processing. It was quite a while until we could actually use this for fuel because we needed Cobra X first, which we haven't unlocked yet, and it was also significantly harder to set up because the recipes are a lot worse. So as I waited for our uranium processing to build up a big enough backup of U-235 so that we could start Covrex, I just added some military science crafting to the mall here. Now I didn't actually put this on its own train stop just because in comparison to the other sciences we really don't need a lot of it at all. And then of course I just used the logistic spots to connect it to the lab setup. And this was the point in the game at which we started needing a lot of electronic components. So I placed down another blueprint here which was the first production line that we'd actually doubled up on so far. And the reason we needed so many electronic components was for the production tech card. These use productivity modules and because we hadn't set up modules on their own, I just placed a little stop here just to route them directly into the production science. The ratios here are a little bit finicky because we needed to actually use red transport belts, so I didn't use a blueprint and I just built it on the go. I really don't know if there's any point in me saying this because you've seen me do it a hundred times, but of course once I set up the train stops for the production science, I brought it over to the labs, hooked it up and got researching. Obviously at this point there's no shortage of things to do and the next thing we faced was a shortage of all things oil. So I looked around for the nearest oil patches and pretty much all of them seemed to be outside our perimeter border. So while I waited for some artillery ammo and artillery turrets to craft in the mall, I started setting up some more oil processing. Before I did this I didn't exactly look at what we were consuming the most of and it turns out it was petroleum gas, which was kind of obvious, I don't know why I didn't think of that because we are running all of the base off of petroleum gas based power. But this resulted in me setting up an entire new oil cracking setup, making light oil, heavy oil and petroleum gas, when in reality we just needed petroleum gas. But here I am expanding the border after using a little bit of artillery. And while I was waiting for the artillery border to be built with the robots, I got a bit bored and as is a bit of a theme, whenever I get bored I start to decorate with some concrete. So I used some of the huge concrete supply that we built up, made some blueprints and started placing concrete throughout the base. In my opinion, placing concrete is one of the most satisfying things you can do in Factorio, especially if you have a large robot network, you get to see pretty much all of them in action. And, I mean, just look at this, isn't it satisfying? Anyway, that's enough concrete ASMR for now. So, I went down and placed some pump jacks on the new oil patches which we just unlocked, and piped it up into our new processing setup. And with the beautiful excess of petroleum gas that we now have, I added another plastic setup to keep up with the needs of our electronic component and red circuit setups. I got a bit sidetracked and I made these perfect night vision glasses from the Afraid of the Dark mod, but I mean you shouldn't complain because it will make the video 10 times better. And then I got back to work, added a whole bunch of new train stops, only this time I pre-concreted it and also renamed all of the stops to unused stops so we didn't get any issues. And the first thing I added in the new block was the Covrex enrichment setup. As I mentioned earlier, the recipe is a bit different, and it also has some strange stone byproduct. A lot of things in Crastorio seem to have this byproduct, but it's relatively easy to steal with. You just ship it out to an assembler at the end that turns it into landfill, stuff it away in a box, and never think about it again. Compared to vanilla, though, you need a whole bunch more U238 and U235 to get this recipe going, so it took a while for it to actually get online, but once I'd started importing some U235, it would run itself. I did this with some pretty simple circuit network setups, just controlling the inserters to only export when the boxes are full. Honestly, I'm not claiming to be good at circuits, and I really don't know what I'm doing, but it worked, so why fix it? With that all set up, we can pretty much leave it in the background until we're ready to make nuclear, and I got on to making some RCUs or rocket control units. These were so that we could launch our first rocket, and in Crastorio 2, launching a rocket is by no means anywhere near the end of the game whatsoever. It does, however, get you some space research data, which is useful for science packs. If you're even considering making more than one rocket silo and you're not using a mega base, honestly, just disappear. Because this single rocket silo drained pretty much all of my low density structures and I had to turn it off multiple times throughout the playthrough so that we could actually run anything else in the base whatsoever. But I basically just botched it onto the end of a train depot, added a couple more stops and placed the rocket silo next to it with a stop outputting the space research data. If you're wondering where the satellites came from, I just set them up in the mall. It used a whole bunch of steel and again I had to turn it off multiple times. 
but it wasn't too difficult and we could just move it over with the logistics bots. Even though it wasn't the end of the game, like I mentioned earlier, I've never actually launched a rocket in Factorio, so I appreciated this moment probably a little bit more than I should have. Unfortunately, the novelty of my first ever rocket launch wore off within a few seconds as we launched one pretty much straight after it. Although the hugely increased manual targeting range of artillery turrets in Crastoria 2 definitely made up for it, so I went around destroying a whole bunch of biters and clearing a bunch of new space to get this mineral water patch down below. We also cleared up a bunch of space to mine a mer site, which alongside mineral water are two new resources which we haven't previously used. And the first thing you should know about these new resources is they take a whole bunch of power to mine. So I went ahead and I set up a nuclear reactor blueprint here to produce 1.5 gigawatts. Unfortunately I didn't make it myself but it's one of the only ones in the run which I didn't. And yes I did go into the editor to place down a water patch so that we could pump it directly into the nuclear just to save us a whole bunch of pipes. Honestly I don't really think it's cheating but if you do feel free to go ahead and click off the video. I did cut most of the building out of the video because you didn't really need to see me place down 100 petroleum gas generators but I mined them all and we were running pretty much purely off of uranium. So then we could go ahead and set up these pump jacks on the mineral water plant and it's basically handled similar to oil. The only real difference is you need to use these mineral water pump jacks rather than normal oil pump jacks. And next came the immersite mining. These immersite patches use something called a quarry drill which is extremely slow and because the patches only allow you to put one drill on them I had to buff a whole bunch of them with beacons and speed modules as much as I physically could. Once I'd put a whole bunch of speed modules and beacons down around each quarry drill, because they only output onto one belt at a time, I did get a chance to use one of the two new belts that Crastorio 2 adds. The green belt is the first one and the purple belt is the second one. We didn't have access to the purple belt yet, so I just went ahead and placed down a green splitter to try and fill the belt as fast as I could. With that all set up, I went ahead and added a whole bunch more fluid processing for hydrogen and chlorine because we need that to make ammonia, which we combine with nitrogen and the mineral water that we just mined to create nitric acid. As I mentioned about a million times now, we did need at some point to place down a whole bunch of atmospheric condensers for nitrogen, and yes, this is the point, as you can see I placed down a ridiculous amount. We really didn't need nitric acid for much stuff at all during this playthrough, so I placed down this tiny setup here and this was enough to supply us for the rest of the game. With that sorted I moved on to making lithium chloride. This used a whole bunch of the hydrogen chloride that I'd made previously as well as a whole bunch of sand so I did have to add a whole nother sand block. We also went ahead and converted some excess lithium chloride into lithium in the same train block. We really didn't need much of this so it was basically just to save space. That was all of the mineral water being consumed so next up was immersite. You crush the raw immersite using crushers into immersite powder and then you combine it with sulfuric acid and nitric acid to make immersite crystals. These were quite slow so I did end up making two, but even with two they were still a bottleneck for us for quite a while. The next thing I set up were AI cores. These things used a whole bunch of resources and were used in a whole bunch of things for different science cards. Whenever this setup here was running and we weren't backed up on them, it used an extremely large amount of resources and pretty much drained our entire throughput. One of the resources it used a whole bunch of was a Mertite, so where possible I just went and added in a couple of speed modules, although we didn't have too many modules because currently I was only making them in the mall and I didn't set them up on their own train stop until a little bit later. Another fun way of boosting throughput was to use these Tesla coils, which essentially transmit energy to trains as long as they have the equivalent receiver coil in them, and then I used that to charge electric engines which you can put in the trains to make them accelerate and go faster. This was an addition to Crastor that I quite enjoyed, as pretty much any vehicle that you could sit in had an equipment grid similar to how the Spidertron would. I never actually did end up making a Spidertron though, because they required something called DT fuel cells to run. DT fuel cells are another way of making power, but it was a whole rabbit hole that I never actually went down. With our throughput issues kind of sorted, I moved on to crafting optimization tech cards. These are made in something called a quantum computer, and these things are extremely fast, and I only used four of them, and still managed to match the output of our art and science productions. I think this is a good point to point out that if you haven't noticed it already, I'm playing extremely slow. I'm not sure why this was, I've seen other people complete it in one or two days. I did do a lot of waiting around, but that can't have added up to more than a couple of hours. The entire playthrough lasted me about four days of game time, which I spread over a couple of months worth of playing. I'm going to attribute my slow playtime to the fact that I've never even completed Factorio Vanilla, so I had a whole bunch of the vanilla game to figure out as well as the new modded stuff. With that being said, at this point in the game I did feel like I was making progress relatively quickly, because shortly after building the optimization tech cards, I made matter tech cards. 
These things require matter research data, although nothing else in the game does, so I just made a setup for matter research data and then routed it directly into the matter tech cards. From the optimization tech card upwards, all the tech cards need these quantum computers, so again I really didn't need that many to supply our science needs. Yet again, made some train stops, routed the science over to the labs, belted it in and we were ready to research. Or at least that's what I thought, but this time we needed to actually use a new lab called the Singularity Lab. I can't remember if I mentioned this earlier, but I have already upgraded the labs once from normal labs to advanced labs. The only difference between upgraded labs is that they forget the older tech cards and allow you to research using the new ones. Oh yeah, and they also consume a whole bunch more energy. Once that was all sorted, I built another train block, paved it out, renamed the stops, and we were ready to go. While I was waiting for the bots to build that, I set up lithium sulfur batteries in one of the only other free train stops we had. These are used as components of the next science card, and they're also used to make a whole bunch of new power armor equipment. In case you hadn't guessed, these take lithium and sulfur to make. Obviously, right? The first thing I built in the new train block was a smelting setup to make immersion plates. These are made by smelting lithium and immersite powder. These things were used to make matter stabilizers, which I'll talk more about later, but they turned out to be the biggest bottleneck of the entire run. But before we built those, we got some new science in the form of advanced tech cards. These things allowed us to research a whole bunch of new power armor things, better inserters, faster machines, new tanks, faster belts, as well as give us the capabilities to make the next tech card. This was probably the biggest jump in progression we've had since we started the new base. And they were also capable of being used inside the Singularity Labs, so we didn't have to make any more type of labs for the rest of the game. Like I mentioned, this unlocks a whole bunch more stuff. The Power Armor MK3, the superior inserters, which come in the forms of long inserters, stack inserters and normal inserters, as well as these advanced assembling machines in chemical plants and furnaces. These machines I didn't really use much apart from in one blueprint right at the end of the game, but if you're making a mega base these things would be quite useful. Talking of the end of the game, here I am setting up energy control units. These are what used the immersion plates that I set up earlier, as well as using a ridiculous amount of low density structures. So in order to run this setup at full capacity, I needed to improve our infrastructure massively. Because of the way I've edited this, we're coming quite close to the end of the game for you watching, but for me there was about a day of playtime in between now and the end of the game where I was just increasing our production of various resources like low density structures and electronic components just to run this setup here. But while I was waiting for that to back up, I set up a mall stop and brought them over to the mall, which allowed us to craft all the new things that I talked about earlier. As well as making them, I also set up recipes for the matter assembler, the stabilizer charging station and the matter plant, all things which we're going to need to finish the game. And the final production line I set up before massively increasing our production of random resources was these matter stabilizers here. Once these things are charged, they're what's used to make the final tech card. And by charged, all I mean is you have to put them through the stabilizer charging stations and then they output a 1 to 1 ratio. The main issue here was that our production for these was incredibly slow and we couldn't deliver them directly because our trains had to carry 40 stacks at once because of the way LTN works. So here I am doing the said resource production increase. So what I did was I doubled our copper production in terms of enriching and smelting as well as adding a whole bunch more copper mining stations. I also needed to add an entire another nuclear power plant. I also set up speed module production to try and squeeze out as much throughput from existing setups as I physically could. And I also added new stops for both electronic components and low density structures. Even with all those upgrades, our throughput still wasn't enough to support the constant creation of those matter stabilizers. So I went ahead and I made immersion fuel here, which allows our trains to run at basically double the speed that rocket fuel allowed them to. And it was a bit of a pain, but I had to change all of the refueling stations to use immersion fuel rather than rocket fuel. After all of that, and a bit more, we were finally ready to place down these stabiliser charging stations to turn our matter stabilisers into charged matter stabilisers. We most definitely did not need this many, as the recipe for the matter stabilisers was extremely slow, and these were extremely quick. Although at this point I was honestly getting a bit bored, and kind of rushing to the end, after about a day's gameplay worth of increasing the throughput of random production lights. Although with that being said, we were getting extremely close to the end of the game, and here I am setting up Singularity Tech cards, which use the charged matter stabilizers and are the last piece of science in the entire game. Once I'd waited a while for a big enough buffer, I routed the Singularity Tech cards over to the labs. Although I'd run out of train stops because it was a bit of a botched setup like I mentioned earlier, so I had to tag it on with this swirly weird train stop at the end here. At this point, we were incredibly close to finishing the game, and besides researching the intergalactic transceiver, the only other thing we needed to do was to buff our power production massively. I decided to do this with a new reactor that Crastorio 2 adds called the Antimatter Reactor, which runs off of charged antimatter fuel cells. And to make these charged antimatter fuel cells, we need to mess around with a product called matter. This is one of the most unique things about Crastorio 2, 
and it can be made from pretty much any resource in the game and converted into pretty much any resource in the game as well. At this point I really did just want to rush to the finish so I didn't make this blueprint here but each one is a self-sustained antimatter fueling station. The basic idea here is that we make matter using greenhouses and then the excess matter that we get from making the matter we turn back into the resource that we need to fuel the greenhouses. And while I was waiting for the bots to build a bunch of those stops I started research for the intergalactic transceiver. And here we are building the intergalactic transceiver in the mall. At this point we're pretty much ready to finish the game. The whole reason of producing all of that antimatter power was so that we could charge this thing here because it charges itself up to 3 terajoules and requires all of that to run. I think what it's supposed to do is send a signal out to space to let you know that you're advanced enough to get picked up because for some reason sending a rocket out into space isn't enough in Crash Story 2. Oh yeah and it also blows up in the process. It was for that reason that I decided to place it in an area with no machines around it just so it didn't blow up the base even though I don't particularly plan on using this save much again. Even with our antimatter power producing about 30 gigajoules a second, it still took ages to charge up. So while it was charging, I decided to add some concrete and decorate the area around it a little bit. But when it's charged, you get a little notification in the bottom right, and all you need to do is press a button on the interface of the transceiver, and you're finished. I knew it was going to explode, but I didn't expect the explosion to be so big that it would reach the base even from all the way out there. But there we go, that's it, that's Crash Story 2 done and dusted, all in one video, edited down to about 40 minutes for your viewing pleasure. If you like the video, please do drop it a like, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, you know how it all works, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh. And if you wanted me to do a little review of Crash Story 2, let me know in the comments and I'll make a quick 10 minute video going over what I liked, what I didn't about the video, etc. See you in the next one.